New concerns are arising from the Apple and FBI case, ransomware watch out, a vigilante has appeared, and bad luck. Actually, sad luck. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for April 13, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Now, I first off want to say thank you to our patrons. Of course, if you want to support the show, you can go over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. On to the news. Now, in a slightly unsurprising change of events, at least one person has come forth explaining that Celebrite actually had nothing to do at all with breaking into the infamous San Bernardino iPhone. It was really one or more gray hat hackers who helped the FBI in return for a lump sum payment. It is unsurprising because zero day exploits are oftentimes kept secret until a payday occurs for the holder. And many companies such as Zerodium, which we have mentioned before, advertises the selling of these zero days. The concern that many hold here is whether the FBI will disclose this vulnerability that they ended up using to crack that iPhone to Apple so that Apple can fix consumers' devices in the future and give their consumers more security. Now, since the FBI has commonly gone to hacker conventions, they've even done convention keynotes and they've done talks, and they have explained how InfoSec and government agencies really need to work together to disclose this kind of information to each other, I would find it rather hypocritical if the FBI chose to keep this under lock and key. Albeit digital locks can be exploited as well, <laughs> given that they've had such a friendly attitude towards the InfoSec community. Along with this news came a new bill drafted by Senator Dianne Feinstein of California and the Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Richard Burr of North Carolina, which would force companies to decrypt and or unlock devices under government court order, as well as as well as provide technical assistance. So obviously, this is a reaction to the Apple versus FBI iPhone case. Given that many companies are working on or already have an encryption technique in place for their devices or software, this bill is being criticized for its, and I quote, clear threat to everyone's privacy and security, as quoted from Nima Giuliani, the legislative counselor for the ACLU. Now, currently, this bill is under draft and is fairly new, and many critics believe that it has little chance of passing. So this is kind of cool. Ransomware, you know of it, it's that nightmare that can encrypt an entire hard drive of contents on a victim's computer. Normally a victim has to pay some kind of fee, like a Bitcoin or two, which ends up being a few hundred bucks, to a hacker to get the decryption password and then get their data back, which they already owned but end up having to pay for. Well, in a positive turn of events, a group of researchers have put together a tool that can decrypt the Petya ransomware in a mere 10 seconds or less, allowing the victim to get their data back without sending bitcoins to the thief. So the tool was created and posted on GitHub by a Twitter user named at Leo and Stone and was later turned into an easy executable by security researcher Fabian Wozar. And now a whole tutorial blog has been posted to help victims through the process. Now while this is a really awesome story of the internet pulling together to help victims of ransomware, and I think that's really great, I do need to say this, beware of downloads, don't open random attachments from random stranger people's emails and always be skeptical about software that you choose to download. Make sure it's coming from a legit site. Use logical security practices so that you won't fall prey to ransomware and chances are you'll never have to worry about something like this happening to you. You guys probably remember this, uh, the huge hype surrounding a pretty serious announcement about a server vulnerability a couple of weeks ago. Well, it turns out Badlock, discovered by CERNET and advertised really heavily to spur awareness and possibly, obviously, free press for CERNET, is actually Hashtag sadlock. The hype put a really bad taste in a lot of critics' mouths. In the most basic of descriptions, the bug allows a hacker to gain remote access to a server via a man-in-the-middle attack, and it allows for denial of service attacks as well. The CVE, or the Common Vulnerability and Exposure Number, is CVE 2016-2118 and 2016-0128, and it does affect several different versions of Samba systems. For example, the bug is not as serious as Heartbleed, which a lot of people were assuming it would be, but it is still important to patch. Patches were released this week, and uh, including on Patch Tuesday, of course, and anyone who runs systems listed at badlock.org are advised, very importantly, to update. 
Our featured comment today comes from, well, several folks on our last episode who balked at the WhatsApp encryption and our positive remarks. Now, while I fully understand and appreciate that WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, which is a company that pretty much runs its beating heart on the data of its users, that's why I don't have it installed on my phones, uh, that in itself makes me kind of critical of any kind of Facebook entity. And this is still a positive story about WhatsApp. So given that WhatsApp has a user base of 1 billion people, it's partnered with Open Whisper Systems in November of 2014, and that is the company that Moxie Marlin Spike is known for. Also the company that made Signal, which is one of the leading encryption messaging apps available. And WhatsApp announced that the encryption for all of its users, not just one iOS, not just iOS over Android, for example, all of its users are using the same protocols as Signal. I would say that's a really good thing for its users. Now, while I prefer a platform not owned by Facebook, one that is preferably open source like Signal or Tech Secure, many users don't care or they are not willing to move to another secure messaging service, which is highly unfortunate. And if a company is willing to add encryption to their platform and still offer the same consumer convenience, because a lot of people don't want to take convenience over security or security over convenience, good for them. I say good for that company. The EFF has given them a six out of seven on their secure messaging scorecard, which is great. They're only losing a point for not being open source, which I consider quite important. Now, if only they would add a warrant canary too, so we would all know that they've never been under a court order to give up any kind of information about their users. Then I'd say, good on you, WhatsApp. But I think that they are heading in the right direction. So thank you everyone for your comments. Of course, if you have any thoughts on today's stories, you can leave them below and we might feature them next week. Now, before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. Did you watch this entire episode? If you did, you must have enjoyed it. So please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. And we may even feature your ador adorable fur babies, just like these ones in our next episode, because they are super, super cute and we want to give back to our community because we appreciate you and you are the reason why we're able to keep the lights on here. Uh, the show is completely ad-free, it's completely independent, so it's very important to us that we, we have you guys out there that are supporting us and we really appreciate it. Our next milestone goal is to add another episode each week in RSS feed and our patrons will still get behind the scenes updates, early access, and a monthly security video by Darren Kitchen of Hack5. Now, if you are new here, um, I'm gonna be over in Tokyo in May, so if you're gonna be hanging out over in Tokyo, just happen to be there in May, uh, hit up snubsy.com slash blog. I'll have a meetup RSVP link over there and you can sign up if you wanna join me. And of course, you can find all the information about our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.